In September 2014, noted archaeologists, epigraphers, and fellow Mayanists met in Florida for the 8th Annual Maya at the Playa Conference. The highlight of the event was to celebrate the achievements of Dr. Peter Matthews, who has participated in countless breakthroughs in Mayan decipherment. In keeping with Peter's legendary sense of humor, an evening was set aside for a roast. And enjoy our little roast of Peter Matthews. Okay? Oh, before we get started, let's give a round of applause to Matt and his staff. Yeah. For all of their hard work. There you go. All right, let's start. Let's start with Peter's humble beginnings, shall we? Okay. Peter Lawrence Matthews was born in a small outback farmhouse. It's now a National Historic Landmark in Canberra, Australia on June 12, 1951. And you can see it's a popular tourist attraction today. For those who are counting, that makes him three cartoons, three tunes, ten wienalls, and seven keens old as of today. Hey. Importantly, we're going to do a, bio, a biographical um, overview and a sort of autobiography or biography of him. Let's see, Peter was an overachiever in grade school. You see his book that he has there? <laughs> right? I'm not sure, Peter. Now, Peter held various jobs as a youth. <laughs> I do want you to know that he was a roadie for a band that would eventually become ACDC back in 1969. It says he was one of the few who actually owned a vehicle and he could drive their equipment around. And there is his vehicle. Now, <clears throat> Peter did have some. Something that Peter's not particularly proud of is that he did do some time. And back in 1969 in Queensland, he was doing community service uh, by having to break rocks for a minor indiscretion while on the road with ACDC. However, his pants will never forget him. And nor do we for having photos like this around. Actually, Peter tells me this is when he was a geologist. This is one of his first jobs. Actually, you're right the first time. It was three okay. years. Three years. Okay. <laughs> Here is Peter, the family man. Right? He's a loyal friend to many, as this picture clearly demonstrates. I'm the one on the left. <laughs> yeah. Peter was initially influenced by Michael Coe's book, The Maya which Peter states, again, was one of the only books he could get in Australia while growing up. He was later influenced Phil, by I, David I, Kelly. I've got to interrupt there. You know what the other two were, which I think is how I got into Yale. Yeah. Because Mike asked what I'd read, and I said that. Well, he was kind of oh, it's going to throw you out. He said anything else, and I said, Kingsborough and Maudsley. <laughs> they, they were the only other two. <laughs> Peter studied under David Kelly at the University of Calgary from 1971 to 1975. He then attended Yale, um, where he studied under anthropology uh, with his friend and mentor, Michael Coe. Um, here's a great shot of Peter with his cat named Yuri. <laughs> I don't know what it is with you epigraphers and cats, but that, sh that photo somebody showed the other day of Linda with the cat like that, I would love to get a copy of it. Whoever has it, please send that. Um, <laughs> we're going to get to the t-shirt, don't worry, okay? Another skill that many of you guys don't really know about is that Peter's actually a first degree black belt. Here he is demonstrating his martial arts skills out in British Columbia. Actually, it was a fire ant. Yes. <laughs> that makes more sense. Uh, Peter's married to his longtime love, Jen, as we see here, a beautiful portrait on the, uh, on the anniversary, first anniversary of Janet finally burning that mountain man hat that Peter was seeing in earlier. <laughs> I made that shirt. <laughs> Just as his shirt attests, Peter can get a little more than testy when he's hungry. Which we, were, we saw tonight, a little demonstration of that. Um, 
Here you see a picture of Peter, the Matthews family auditioning for Little House on the Australian Prairie. Uh, ho, ho, ho. Wonderful photo of Peter as Father Christmas. Isn't that touching? In 1984, Peter earned the prestigious Genius Grant from the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation. The No Strings Attached grant recognized, I'm going to read this, exceptional individuals doing transformative, creative work in their field and the potential for doing more significant contributions in the future. Amazing, isn't it? Hey, Peter, um, what have you contributed since then? I believe the MacArthur Foundation is still waiting. <laughs> no, 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 they're not. The next year they realized it was a printer's error and they asked for their money back. <laughs> now, um, I have my own award that I want to present Peter with right now. And it's called the World's Worst Correspondent. And I think everybody in this room can attest to it. <laughs> I knew it. Uh, There's my award, Peter. <laughs> the, 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 this thing came off. Oh, this thing broke it. Made all this came down here and I broke it at the last minute. Figures. But there it is. There's your award, okay? Um, enjoy. I thought we'd just throw in this touching photo. That's touching, isn't it? Um, Peter's wearing his first tie, right, as an instructor and a research assistant at Harvard. Um, as part of this corpus of my Heart of the Conscriptions project. Here's Peter and Janet showing off a collection of old Australian cookbooks. <laughs> um, Peter taught in the Department of Archaeology at uh, University of Calgary from 1987 to, or 1987 to 1999. Um, and here you see with his colleague, David Kelly. Peter was then lured away from Calgary in 1999 by La Trobe University, where they enticed him back to Australia to make him a senior research fellow. Um, he continued to teach at La Trobe until he formally retired in 2013. Um, in 2002, he was awarded the Jolly Good Fellow. Oh, I'm sorry, I meant to say Research Fellow, um, by the Australian Academy of Humanities for his lifelong contributions to Maya studies. Um, Peter's described, by the way, Rachel Professor. You're, you should look online and see yourself sometimes. Um, I asked, I told that to Peter today, and because some of his students have posted some interesting notes. One of his most recent posts from a student in one of his classes said, he's a bit of an eccentric, someone with a walrus mustache, bad hair, and someone who loves the Geelong Cats as the American football. <laughs> That's from the <laughs> students. Yeah, I'm afraid. Get ready. Okay? Elaine Sheely also reminded me the other day that Peter was a closet clothes horse. Who <laughs> loves the opportunity to shop for the latest sportswear wherever he goes. Here we see him showing off his greatest duds in Chiapas, Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing to say on that one, huh, Peter? Um, all right, let, let's, let's take a look at Peter's field work for a moment, okay? All right, now we get to the touchy part. David Kelly, again going to Cambridge uh, on sabbatical for the 1973-74 school year. Um, during that time, Earl Green Robertson was planning and beginning to organize the first Mesa Redunda um, and realizing that, he, that uh, he couldn't attend, David Kelly offered, or basically volunteered Peter to go um, in his stead. So Peter, um, or David urged Peter to essentially attend on behalf um, because he had transcribed most of the hieroglyphic texts of Palenque um, in the T numbers and, and worked out all the math um, for the long count dates. And so he arrives at Palenque um, to be greeted by Linda Sheely, which started their lifelong friendship and collaborations. Both Linda and Peter were immediately embraced by those in the audience during that first day, right? Um, Phil, this is how I met Linda. And I, I think it should be... I think how I met Linda is, is worth saying, I must say, even if I, I, I'm hoping by doing this too that I can kind of take up, sorry? Oh, speak into the microphone, you know, that's what they said to Nixon. Um, <laughs> actually, they said speak into the vase of flat, vase of flat. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, for heaven's sake. Okay. How I first met Linda. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know anyone knew 
of me or that I was going to Palenque. So when I got off the bus from Villa Hermosa, as Mel liked to call it, <laughs> I, I managed to find my way to La Cañada or La Canada. <laughs> 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 and uh, just as I was going past this little beautiful house with a thatched roof off on the right of the dirt road going down the hill, this woman came out of the house and said to me, you must be Peter Matthews. And knowing that the only person who knew I was coming was Merle Green Robertson, and yet not knowing Merle, I said, Oh, are you Mrs. Robinson? <laughs> There's not many people know my middle name is Dustbin. <laughs> anyway, the lady said, Hell no, I'm Linda Shearley! <laughs> and we got on like a house on fire. <laughs> Well, it was during that workshop, during that, that first Mesa Redonda, where you know essentially they worked out the chronology, the dynastic history of early Palenque. Uh, and they, they wrote it out of these long books. Uh, Peter brought some, and Elaine gave us some copies of some of this material, so you can see this. Peter just gave me these the other day. Um, and these are historical treasures, right? Right here. Looking at the sort of, where well, we start looking at modern decipherment, the modern practices of modern decipherment. So a lot was accomplished during that first uh, Mesa Redonda. I like to show this picture because this is a picture of Peter fa uh, uh, modeling as a fashion model. No, uh, the building was falling over. Yeah. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, following this, that early success of that first Mesa Redonda, um, Peter and Linda and Floyd Lounsbury and Michael Coe and David Kelly would meet whenever they could, um, pretty much every year at many conferences held at Dumbarton Oaks. Um, and the first one was organized uh, by Elizabeth Benson. Um, for those of you who don't know Merle, right? Merle, instrumental too in our area. Uh, Peter and Linda's uh, published their first joint groundbreaking article on the Lords of Blanque based on their work done at that first Mesa Redundant. It was published in the first Mesa Redundant volume. Peter and Linda would continue to collaborate on a series of articles and a series of publications for the next 25 years. Um, I first learned, learned of Peter from his work in 1975 on Bantoon's sort of uh, pocket steel that we were talking about today in my lecture. Um, Peter also worked at Copan as a member of the Copan Archaeological Project, and he worked again from 79 to 97 um, uh, at the Peabody Museum as part of the Corpus of Hieroglyphic Inscriptions Project, where he also drew uh, and taught um, at Harvard. Um, Peter is a hugely talented graphic artist whose illustrations have, uh, of classic Mayan monuments and inscriptions have appeared everywhere, um, including four <laughs> volumes on Tony Nod. Remember this one, Peter? Um, this was in uh, Austin, Texas one year, and they had this big book sale, and I got up and I got this book um, rushing up on the Sunday afternoon to buy the first book, um, and I had Peter sign it. He hadn't even seen it yet. Uh, he hadn't even come on. He didn't even see a page proof of it before I got it, so um, I, I, I scanned the, the, his, his signature for you. Um, a couple of other important publications that came out, um, consideration of the early classic, um, the dynastic history of Dos Pilos, just some other um, important milestones in some of Peter's work. It was beginning, it was during the late 1980s, early 1990s, that Peter began lecturing at the annual Maya meetings in Texas, um, where he was always the keynote speaker for those long three hours, that felt like 12 hour, um, uh, opening introductions on what is a glyph and this is the Maya. Um, it was during those early workshops back in 89 that I got to meet Peter and I got to hang out with Linda. And back in those days, um, everyone was treated equal, right? Everyone was in that era, was a great era of sharing and exchange between layperson and professional. Um, we then brought him to Cleveland. And Cleveland was an integral scholar in our uh, Kenal Unique uh, conferences that we held annually in Cleveland. And these actually were a very large conference, probably the second largest in the nation at that time. Um, and we owe it to Peter's success for, for five uh, successful visits. Um, our workshops were immediate success and, and generated a lot of uh, interest in, uh, uh, for people to attend and they were, we've had uh, as high, crowds as high as 150 or so. Here's some pictures from that first weekend um, in 1990. 
and I'm showing Peter doing his thing on Peter's neighbors. And then in 2005, when we um, brought him back. But continuing on with Peter's epigraphic work, um, Peter's work on classic Maya emblem glyphs back in 1991 basically emphasized that all of these titles of kings related to equal status, essentially uh, talking about people being in autonomous terms. Um, Peter looked at how emblem glyphs functioned. It's pretty much the same paper he delivered today, as a matter of fact. Um, and, it really, and, he, and basically, I said he was going to look at 20 year periods of time of how the Maya and how the Maya political organization was moving. And that's pretty much what he did. It was 91, 2000. Can you come up with some original one next time? Matt should be demanding money back on that one. Um, he was hanging out at the Sheely's house. Um, but I love this slide because it really tells us how decipherments were done. It was the uh, rock, paper, scissors method it was often employed. Um, sometimes things got a little carried away. Um, we had a police line up over a disagreement of a reading of Glyph one night. Um, and things didn't work out good for him. Um, Peter's next major project was his El Cayo. And Peter had been ex excavating at El Cayo, um, a site located in Mexico along the Usamacita River. Um, and in 1993, Peter's crew located this beautiful altar for um, a beautifully preserved monument with a fine hieroglyphic inscription, as you can see here. Um, and it basically commemorates the 91500 period ending. For its protection, right, the altar was buried, covered with protective sheeting, buried under, what, three tons of rock and rubble, right? However, due to lawlessness in the region, after an attempt was made to loot the altar. So Peter and his co-director, uh, Mario Alifat, that many of us know, were asked by Ina in 1997 to sort of remove the altar and get it ready for transport to a safer location. Um, it was in the midst of that uh, chaos created by these angry villagers, upset that the altar was being moved, that they demanded cash and other valuables from Peter and his crew. Um, Peter and his crew were then lined up along the river and badly beaten, um, blows uh, with a rifle butt and then kicked, guns held to their head, forced to leave the area immediately. Um, some escaped through the forest, others um, decided to cross to Usamacinta for refuge. Um, and early on June 29th, uh, 1997, word of attack um, went out around the wire, so people around the world learned of this plight of these poor archaeologists. Um, uh, injured, um, hungry, tired, and exhausted, they made their way through the jungle, um, hoping that a passing boat would pick them up and take them to Piaget's neighbors downstream, or upstream. It was later reported um, that the aggressors in this case, for the most part, were criminals um, from non-local communities, disguised as locals, who were involved in the trafficking of drugs and contraband firearms and the looting of archaeological sites. Um, the entire event was chronicled um, in 2008 by the History Channel, which we don't really like, right? Um, but the History Channel did a show, and of course they have to sort of make it nicer. Um, the real tomb hunters, snakes, curses, and booby traps in which Peter was highlighted um, with his story um, in that very sad episode at the Cleveland Metro Park Zoo, which you can see on the right. Um, he was staying at my house, and so we filmed this. So. Um, here's some more goofing around at Linda's house. We're all doing the best to be our god of number zero, right? Um, <laughs> Some of these pictures are shown on the, the Cracking the Maya Code video. I'm the one who shot these, uh, most of these. Um, two of our most notorious pranksters, right? Peter on the left and John Justison on the right, right? Woo! Right, yeah. Uh, speak no evil, hear no evil, and see no evil. Mean we, mean, mean we say more, right? I'm not sure if you knew this either, but Peter is quite this avid uh, athlete and sports aficionado. And um, in 1993, Peter was featured on a film on ESPN. Yes, ESPN doesn't have any other acronyms other than the Sports Channel, right? Um, taking a bunch of crazy kayakers down the Agua Azul Falls in uh, Chiapas. Ooh. For many years, Peter's been called an pig refer. And not for the obvious reasons. Peter loves bacon. No, strike that. Peter loves pork. Oh, no, strike that too. Peter's often been criticized by his peers for his friendship for all things pig. Um, here you see him being honored at the 1993 Mesa Redonda with a faux pig's head. Pig's, uh, Peter's fondness for the pig extends back to his early visits to Merle's house. 
um, where she kept a pet uh, peccary named Petunia um, that was awfully fond of Peter. This set off a rather strange love affair between Peter and those members of the swine family. Um, because of this rather uneasy friendship with all things pig, friends, colleagues, students, and other acquaintances often sent him images of pigs or stuffed animals. One year in Austin, they actually let live pigs go in the middle of his talk, and he had no, uh, no idea. Other times, they had stuffed animals walk across the stage and drop little things off. Uh, and, and grunt along the year, so um, pretty good. But you know what? I know why he loves um, these pigs. This is something he won't share with you. I found this out from his wife. His wife tells me that he's been a member of the Victorian State School Order of the League of Kindness since the age of eight. And as a member, he pledged to protect all living creatures and vowed to protect them the best he could from any form of cruelty. And so here's his copy of the certificate of that statement. Now, here's a selfie, 1993 at Linda's house. Linda was a few, had her own Xerox machine. And Peter, whatever, uh, always when I was Xeroxing overheads at the end of a long Maya Hardwick weekend, Peter always had to get in the video. Concert. Always about you. Remember that. Uh, returning back to sort of this chronological look, I'm almost done, guys. Um, at Peter's professional work, uh, uh, he published in 1998 uh, uh, and co-author of the seminal volume called The Code of Kings, The Language of Seven Sacred Temples and Tombs with the late Linda Sheely. Um, here we see a, another important selfie of Peter as Napoleon, King of Palenque in 2001. <laughs> um, Peter was also the co-director and project of Pigafer for the Notch 2 Archaeological Project, directed by co-fellow um, uh, um, University of Calgary, uh, Catherine Reese um, Taylor. More recently, Peter's been involved with a number of uh, projects that was involved with from FAMCY, the Who's Who in the Classic Maya World. He was also working with Peter Burrow in updating the John Montgomery uh, Dictionary of Maya Hieroglyphs. And just recently, I learned that Peter, um, since his retirement from the Trove, He's been dabbling in a new business, that being Peter's ice cream. Um, it's beginning to sweep across Australia with such flavors as Vegemite and Roo-Doo. Um, but lastly, um, I wish to thank Elaine and David Sheely, Mary Miller, Joel Skidmore, and of course Peter Matthews for all these wonderful photos that we've been looking at tonight. Um, thank you, Peter, for being a great scholar, a great friend, and a great uh, a mentor to many of us. Um, you continue to inspire us with your knowledge, through your sense of humor, um, and we'll just leave it with that. We also, with, with that said, we'd like to thank Michael Zimmerman for the beautiful award that he created uh, and handed out yeah, to yeah. us.